So in this video, we'll discuss about the aqueduct and particularly a siphon aqueduct. Generally, the water set canal do not cross natural drainages, but in actual orientation of the canal network, this ideal condition may not be available and the obstacles like natural drainage such as river may be present across the canal. So the cross drainage works must be provided for the running of the irrigation system and a siphon aqueduct is a cross drainage work. If you see in the figure, this is the drainage, okay, drainage and this is the canal. So providing a siphon aqueduct, the natural passage of drainage is not obstructed and the flow of canal is also continued. So an aqueduct is provided when there is crossing of the natural drainage as well as the canal. There are different uh, cross drainage structures okay, such as aqueduct, siphon aqueduct, super passes and siphon super passes, level crossing, inlet and outlet. But as we are discussing about the siphon aqueduct, so on the basis of the high flood level and the bed level of canal, siphon aqueduct is selected. That is if the high flood level of the drainage is greater than that of the bed level of canal, then siphon aqueduct is provided. Okay. In this figure also, if you can see high flood level is here and the bed level of canal is here. So we are providing a siphon aqueduct. And also this inspection road allows for the transportation purpose. Okay. In this figure you can see here this is a siphon aqueduct okay this is the uh, canal this is the road and this is the natural drainage so these six steps are required for the design of the siphon aqueduct a siphon aqueduct is provided when the high flood level of the drainage is greater than that of the canal bed level so the first step is to calculate the water wave for the drainage that is natural drainage or uh, that may be a river okay so it is given as p is equal to 4.75 under root q this is the water wave equation okay and uh, with this value we have to provide suitable number of piles and calculate the total width uh, i will show you that in the numerical similarly size of the barrel okay through which the water will flow then we have to design the canal waterway that was for the drainage waterway now we have to design for the canal waterway and for this we have to provide a fluming section before fluming section and at the exit of the fluming section a contraction portion and an expansion portion okay this is the direction of the flow so in the case of contraction that is upstream we will provide 2 is to 1 splay and 3 is to 1 in case of expansion that will be the design consideration in the canal waterway now the width of the canal waterway okay or this fluming section is taken as the half of the bed width for example if this width is 30 meter then the width of the fluming section is taken as 15 meters generally now design of water level at different section so if we see this is the contraction portion this is the expansion portion and this will be the fluming section and it will continue with the same cross section so we can see one section two section three section four different section in the flow okay so we have to find water level at this different section one two three four okay in this step i'll discuss this in the numerical head loss through siphon barrel so the water is flow okay the water flows through the barrel so head loss through the siphon barrel is to be calculated using the uni on wins formula which is given by hl is equal to 1 plus f1 plus f2 l by r v square by 2g minus va square by 2g va is the approach velocity which is generally neglected okay so this head loss due to approach velocity is neglected f1 is the coefficient of head loss at the entry and generally it is taken as 0.5 for the onset mouth and generally we will take 0.5 and f2 is given as a 1 plus b by r a and b are the factors depending upon the material and in case of our book okay irrigation book from agor you can find this at table 14.1 page number the another unknown term here is r that is hydraulic radius of barrel r is equal to a by p v is the velocity 
through the barrel. Fifth step is to calculate the uplift due to water. Okay. And sixth step is to calculate or design the canal transition. Okay. This transition zone is to be designed using the Mitra's hyperbolic formula. Bx is equal to Bn Bf into Lf. Lf Bx minus Bn minus Bx into X. So you can see Bn, Bf, Bx at any section at any x dis, uh, at distance x and uh, Lf is the length of transition. Uh, we will discuss this on the numerical. So this is the question. Okay, you can read it out. And uh, these are the components we have to design for the cross drainage structure that is siphon aqueduct. And basically we can uh, design an aqueduct on the basis of the uh, level of cross drainage structure and the high flood level of the drainage. So in this case, cross drainage is work. Canal bed level is 160 which is slightly below the high flood level that is 160.5 meters so we have to provide a siphon aqueduct because for siphon aqueduct the high flood level of natural drainage is greater than that of the bed level of the canal so drainage is large type c aqueduct is provided we have type a type b type c and on the basis of the quantity of water the uh, type of aqueduct is provided type a is used for the small drainage and for type c we is adopted when the drainage is large so the very first step is to design the drainage waterway and which is given by p is equal to 4.75 under root q q is the discharge of drainage not canal okay so which is in our case 400 so uh, i have kept this is 400 4.75 under root 400 we get 95 meter as the discharge uh, total waterway now we have to provide number of barrels okay so that water will pass through it and depending upon that we will provide 10 clear span that is 10 barrels of 9 meter and 9 pyres of 1.5 meter if you see this will be the pyre these are the barrels okay these are the barrels it will continue so water will flow through this okay water will flow through this and each of them is 9 meter and 9 pyres of 1.5 meter okay then total length of waterway this total length will be 90 because 9 barrels sorry 10 barrels of 9 meter and 9 pyres of 1.5 meter so 90 plus 13.5 103.5 meter and it should be greater than drainage waterway okay. and now we have to consider the height of the barrel and velocity through the barrel generally by assuming the velocity height of the barrel is calculated and the velocity in the barrel should be between 2 to 3 meter per second and in our case we have to find the height of barrel and we know discharge is equal to area multiplied by velocity and in our case area is breadth by depth that is height into velocity so now we can uh, determine the height of the barrel okay and adopting the height of barrel as 2 meter less than the calculated value again check the actual velocity and it should lie within 2 to 3 meter per second now the another step is or the second step is to design the canal waterway so as we said there will be contraction and expansion if the direction of flow is this this will be the contraction this will be the expansion and for contraction we provide a splay of that display is this inclined portion of 2 is to 1 and length of contraction in the transition is calculated as 20 minus 10 that is 20 is this distance that is bed with we can see bed width is 20 meter and as i said the fluming section is taken as half of the bed width so this is 10 meter okay so 20 minus 10 divided by 2 multiply by the fluming section uh, this slope 2 okay so 10 meter the now we'll design for the expansion transition length of expansion transition is 20 minus 10 by 2 into 3 3 is the uh, slope in the tra exit okay now we can calculate the length of expansion transition third step is to design the water level at different section as i said there will be four different section in the case of aqueduct 
so for first second third and fourth we'll start with the fourth one okay because we'll be provided with the rl of the exit that is if you see here bed level of the canal that is 160 meter so we have to start from here now at section 4 we can find the velocity if we see it is coming through a trapezoidal section so we'll use the trapezoidal uh, formula uh, trapezoidal area velocity is equal to discharge by area in case of this is a trapezoidal section so by plus zy is square and z is taken as 1.5 generally and we are provided with depth as 1.5 meter and breadth of this section is 20 meter that is bed width we can find the velocity v4 now water level is 160 plus 1.5 that is 160 is the bed level 1.5 is the depth so water level at 44 is 161.5 meter now total energy line high flood level plus velocity head then we will get the total energy line at 4 okay similarly at section 33 so at section 33 velocity uh, can be calculated as q by b into y b because it is a rectangular portion and b is 10 meter for the flaming section and y is the depth that is 1.5 meter so we can calculate the velocity v3 similarly expansion loss because uh, after this there will be expansion so there will be an expansion loss so for expansion loss we have c multiply by v 2 square minus v1 square by 2g and for expansion loss the value of c is taken as 0.3 and v3 square minus v4 square v3 we have calculated and v4 is also uh, calculated so now total energy line will be 161.528 plus 0 .00, 0 0.034 and we can calculate the tail at 33 now rl of water surface is given as 161 tail minus velocity head so rl of water surface at 33 is calculated as 161.42 and rl of bed is calculated as the uh, water surface minus the water depth so we can calculate the rl of bed at section 33 similarly at section 22 we can find the velocity v2 it is a rectangular portion so q in by v into y so what we see is that for section 3 3 and section 2 2 the velocity will be same and for section 1 and 4 the velocity will be same okay major friction loss hl because it is a fluming section so there will be a major friction loss hl depending upon the length of the fluming section so v square by h square by r to the power 4 by 3 into l now r is the hydraulic uh, radius which can be calculated as a by p and uh, this is a rectangular portion so area will be breadth multiply by depth and for perimeter okay now total energy line is equal to 161.562 plus 0 0.061 okay this is the uh, value of total energy line at 33 and that when added with the friction loss we will get the total energy line of section 2 water level will be calculated as total energy line minus velocity head at section 22 now bed level will be calculated as uh, water level minus water depth now for section first that is 1 the velocity at 4 and 1 will be equal then contraction loss because there will be a contraction and for contraction the value of c will be 0 0.2 and then we can calculate the contraction loss to when total energy line of section 2 is subtract is added by contraction loss of section 1 we will get this total energy line of section 1 water level is calculated as total energy line of section 1 minus velocity head and bed level is calculated as uh, water level minus water depth now head loss through siphon barrel as we have the unison formula uh, velocity through the barrel we have calculated as 2.22 meter per second and f1 is taken as 0.505 f2 can be calculated from this formula a plus a1 plus b by r r is calculated through the formula a by p and in this case you can see the barrel flows full so the perimeter or weighted perimeter is taken as uh, depth plus breadth into 2 that is 2l plus b and area is taken as 9 into 2 because 2 is the height of the barrel and 9 is the breadth we have taken the 
clear water way of 9 meter then we can calculate the value for L that is way is taken as 5 meter the canal flows through 5 meter and uh, concrete structure are provided of 0.4 meter 0.4 meter at the end and in between we provide 0.3 meter okay basically this is the fluming section okay this is the design of fluming section 10 meter we have the fluming section and uh, we will provide concrete works on the edges of 0.4 and 0.3 if it was 15 meter then we'll provide uh, 5 meter 5 meter 5 meter and then 0 0.4 0 0.3 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 in this way we'll provide the length now upstream high flood level which can be calculated as this is the afflux okay hl we have calculated as 0 0.389 we have the downstream high flood level that is 160.5 meter plus 0 0.389 afflux is the head loss between upstream and downstream so that is 160.889 meter now uplift pressure on the roof of the barrel for full water load and dead weight of the slab with uplift rl of bottom of trough this is the bed level of canal and this thickness is of 0.4 meter okay so rl of canal is provided minus 0.4 meter that will give the rl of bottom of trough okay then entry loss 0.5 v square by 2g this is the velocity through the barrel okay 0. this is 2.22 volume square by 2 into 9.81 we can calculate the entry loss similarly uplift on roof is calculated as high flood level of stream minus entry loss minus rl of bottom of canal trough so we have calculated all those things now we can calculate the uplift on the roof 0. 0.775 meter of water what is the uh, unit weight of water that is we take uh, 10 kilonewton per meter square so if we convert into terms of kilonewton per meter then we will get 7.75 kilonewton per meter now the final step is design of transition bx is equal to this is the equation and in case of uh, contraction the value is taken as 20 meter of the bed width fluming section 10 meter length of this play is 10 meter so B A, uh, B N B F L F okay and B X we have to calculate B X uh, by substituting value of X from 0 to 10 okay you can take value of X 0 2 4 6 8 10 and then we will calculate the value of B X by substituting value of for example if the value of X is taken as 0 then we will get the value of B X as 10 if we put value of x as 2 then we will get 200 by 18 so in this way you can continue similarly for the exit okay the things will become reverse that is you will get something like this now bx will be sorry bn bf this will be l f and b x now bn is 20 similarly we'll get the value okay so i hope you have understood this lecture